So I've now I've now turned on the um, I've now turned on the um, the recording, everyone. Okay. So remember, uh, you're now going to be you're now recorded. Okay. So you're now recorded. Uh, can I just tell you for GDPR purposes, please do not enter any personal details into the chat box. Okay. So for GDPR purposes, do not enter any personal details into the chat box. Please do not turn on your webcams, okay, and so on. So for safety purposes, we ask you to communicate uh, through the chat box, okay, uh, because uh, that's how uh, we do stuff at Kaplan, okay. Great. So my name is Neil, everyone. Um, hey, Cuthbert, lovely to see you, Cuthbert. Great to see you. Um, Uh, we've got a few people joining excellent okay great stuff so so let's get cracking so I'm here today to tell you about Finance Act um, Finance Act 21 and Finance Act 21 is going to be examinable um, from June 22 up till um, March 23 okay so we've got this new Finance Act uh, Finance Act 22 uh, Finance Act 21, which is examinable from June 22 up to March 23. So, uh, uh, any of you that are doing uh, that are uh, set sitting the exam in um, in June, um, you know that um, the same rules will apply up till March 2023. Okay. So, what I'm going to be doing today is I'm going to be covering all the changes that you need to be aware of. So I'll be covering all the changes, okay? So um, uh, Finance Act 21 update. So Finance Act 21 will be examinable from June 22 up till March uh, 2023. And the examiners like putting in the new areas um, into the... Um, the examiners like putting these new areas into the exam, so this is very important, okay? So it's very important you do take time to understand this. So what we find is any of the new areas that come in are likely to be examined. And what we're going to be doing today is we're going to be covering different areas that are relevant for the exam, uh, which is income tax, computations, uh, car benefits, uh, and then I'm going to cover a few other areas which are relevant as well, which have come in, um, such as... Um, the, um, the 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 rules on Brexit, okay, and the rules affecting personal service companies. Uh, is there anyone in class here from uh, who are, who's doing the first tax paper, TX? Is there anyone who's doing the first tax paper, TX? If you're doing just if you're doing uh, TX and not advanced tax, can can you let me know? because you know some of the stuff I will be covering is based only on advanced tax. Okay, so no one, so all of you are doing advanced tax, that's brilliant. So for those, of, for all of you, um, then uh, everything that I'm covering is going to be relevant to you, okay? Excellent, now one of the things the examiner will ask you to do is he'll ask you to do marginal computations. Can any of you tell me what we mean by the word marginal? What do we mean by the word marginal? Can you type your answer into the chat box? Uh, Luke is saying net of tax. Yeah, extra. Well done, Druvi. Yeah. So the word marginal means extra tax. Okay. Now, um, what they've now done is they've increased the personal allowance to fifty to twelve five seventy. So it's a bit of a strange amount. Okay. So remember in the past it used to be twelve thousand five hundred. Now it's uh twelve five seventy. And the basic rate band has now gone up to thirty seven thousand seven hundred. In terms of the higher rate band it's still one hundred and fifty thousand. One of the things they'll ask you is about taxing uh, savings income. Okay. So they'll ask you about taxing uh, savings income. And in terms of uh, the savings income, there have been no changes to savings income. So remember, the way we tax income, we always tax non-savings income first, which is rents, um, employment income, and self-employed profits. We then tax savings next, and finally we tax dividends. 
um, in terms of uh, in terms of savings income do all of you remember the nil rate bands for savings income yeah these are completely unchanged so uh, the nil rate bands for savings income are unchanged um, basic rate taxpayers get a nil rate band of 1000 pounds higher rate taxpayers get 500 pounds do any of you uh, remember what additional rate taxpayers get in terms of savings nil rate bands so let's say we have a footballer okay like um, like Mohammed Salah okay well, what kind of uh, um, nil rate band does Salah get for savings income nothing thank you Caitlin yeah thank you Imran yeah thank you yeah it's it's only given to basic rate taxpayers and higher rate taxpayers additional rate taxpayers like like Salah get nothing okay but in terms of dividends everyone gets uh, a nil rate band of two thousand pounds okay yeah good so with dividends everyone thank you Rashida everyone gets a, a nil rate band of two thousand pounds so what your examiner could tell you is someone like Mohammed Salah uh, he um, he's obviously an additional rate taxpayer he gets a dividend of four thousand pounds okay now do, does anyone remember the rate of income tax on dividends for additional rate taxpayers? Uh, yes, it's 38.1. Yeah, good, Imran, thank you. So it's 38.1%, okay? So let's say Mohammed uh, Salah gets uh, 4,000 dividends. He's allowed to claim a 2,000 nil rate band right so only 2,000 of the dividends will be taxed and the rate of tax on the 2,000 is 38.1 percent so can all of you have a go at working out the tax that he's got to pay on his dividends if he gets 4,000 of dividends so I hope all of you have your calculator good so all you're going to say is 2,000 multiplied by um, 38 point one percent yeah very good yeah thank you Cameron thanks Rashida uh, thank you uh, Asha and uh, Cuthbert as well thank you yeah well done Kemi good 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 excellent excellent good now uh, so this is what we mean by uh, marginal tax computations the examiner is like asking you about the extra tax payable okay now with regard to dividends is there any national insurance payable on dividends do we have to pay no no yeah so with dividends all we have to do is we just work out the income tax payable on dividends there's no national insurance payable on dividends okay now um, the next thing the examiner will do is he'll give you an employee so we know in the exam uh, the examiner likes giving you either an employee or someone who is self-employed. So let's say the examiner gives you James, who's an employee and is a basic rate taxpayer. Now, um, in terms of basic rate taxpayers, do any of you remember what rate of income tax basic rate taxpayers get? Yes, very good. Uh, very good. Yeah. Uh, basic rate taxpayers pay income tax at 20%. Okay. Now, in terms of basic rate taxpayers, because we're employees, do any of you know what rate of class one national insurance basic rate taxpayers pay? Yes, very good, Safir. Thank you, Dhruvi. Thank you, Ashar and Rashida. It's 12%, right? So what the examiner could tell you is James is a basic rate taxpayer. He's an employee. And he gets a bonus of £10,000, right? So on the bonus, James has got to pay income tax at 20%, but he's also got to pay Class 1 national insurance at a rate of 12%, as he has said good okay so he's paying income tax and he's paying national insurance so what's the total rate of tax James has got to pay 
very good yes he's excellent excellent yeah he's got to pay 32 percent yeah well done many of you have worked it out already he's got to pay three thousand two hundred in tax okay so what the examiner likes asking you is how much after tax income will he get okay so because he's paying three thousand two hundred on the ten thousand how much will he be left with after he pays the tax Excellent. Well done, Kemi. Well done, Rashida. Absolutely correct. He'll have to pay, he'll be left with 6,800. Did all of you understand that? Did everyone understand how we got the 6,800? Yeah? Good. Yeah? So, uh, thank you, Abigail. Yeah. So, um, so what we said here is, uh, in terms of James, he'll have to pay income tax at 20% and he'll pay class one national insurance at 12 percent okay so the total rate of tax he's paying is 32 percent so the way you work out the after-tax income is you just take the 10,000 and you multiply by 68 percent does everyone know how I got 68 how did I get 68 Yeah, 100 take away 32. Yeah, thank you, Kemi. Thank you, Luca. Thanks, Simran. Um, Feder, Federuk. Yeah, good. Yeah, and Rashida. Yeah, excellent. So these are called the marginal tax rates. Okay, so that's what you have to use in the exam. Now, the next thing the examiner will ask you about is a basic rate taxpayer's investment income so let's say James is a basic rate taxpayer and he gets 2,000 in interest and 3,000 in dividends okay now because he's a basic rate taxpayer what is the nil rate band for interest for James um, not a hundred yeah a thousand a thousand thank you Luca thank you shrewd yeah so he'll only have to pay um, income tax on 1,000 of interest okay and because it's a basic rate taxpayer how much tax will he pay on the 1,000 interest 200 yeah thank you as thank you Cuthbert yeah these are called marginal tax computations excellent now in terms of the dividends how much of James's dividends uh, will be tax-free he's a basic rate taxpayer yeah, 2,000. Yeah, 2,000. Absolutely. So as far as James is concerned, he'll only have to pay, um, he'll only have to pay, um, he'll only have to pay income tax on 1,000 of the dividends. Okay. And uh, basic rate taxpayers pay income tax on dividends at 7.5%. So can all of you have a go at working out the total income tax James has got to pay on his investment income okay so just tax 1,000 uh, of the interest at 20% and then tax 1,000 of the dividends at 75% yeah thank you uh, at 7.5% yeah thank you Sabine yeah very good some good answers coming through come on everyone uh, thank you harsh good okay so uh, Thank you, yes, yeah, good, Rashida. The total income tax James has got to pay is 275 pounds. Did everyone understand how we got 275 pounds? When I ask you questions, uh, instead of uh, for yes, just type in Y, okay, for Y. If there's something you don't understand, type in N for no, okay? Good, good, good. So all of you have understood how to deal with investment income for basic rate taxpayers that comes up in all the exams okay it has to come up um, in every exam so um, what we would say here is James has got to pay income tax on just 1,000 of the interest at 20% which gives us 200 pounds and he'll only pay income tax on 1,000 of the dividends because uh, here he's um, there's a 2,000 um, nil rate band for dividends 
and uh, what we're going to do then is we're going to tax that at 7.5 percent to give us 75 pounds okay I've got an interesting question from Vicky here Vicky uh, with trust income in fact I'm planning on doing an article on trusts actually okay I'm planning on doing an article on trusts now um, if the if the income comes from what's called a discretionary trust then any income from a discretionary trust is treated as non-savings income okay so it's actually treated as non-savings income and the discretionary trust deducts 45 percent tax at source so let's say uh, they're going to pay out a 10,000 of a discretionary trust income you'll only actually receive 5,500 but if um, if you get yeah absolutely Druvi if you get uh, income from what's called an interest in possession trust so that's the other type of uh, trust we have then the income retains its original identity so let's say the interest in possession trust gets dividends and then pays you dividends you're treated as receiving dividend income okay let's say it gets interest and pays you interest you're treated as getting interest income does that answer your question Vicky so with the with trust income it's based on what type of trust it is okay so just look and see whether it's either discretionary trusts or an interest in possession trust yes yeah you see this is what I'm trying to say he's he's examining quite tricky stuff okay now to be honest with you trusts is not really a mainstream area okay um, but um, I'm going to write an article do all of you read the PQ magazine does everyone read the PQ magazine yeah yeah so I'll just type it in here uh, it's called the PQ part qualified magazine um, and uh, it's a free magazine okay and you know it, it gives you some useful resources okay so I'm, I'm one of the writers for PQ magazine I tend to write tax articles there to help students so you know if you look at that um, you'll be able to pick up the articles good um, now um, the other thing the examiner could tell you is he could also give you a higher rate taxpayer okay so instead of giving you a basic rate taxpayer he could tell you uh, this employee is now a higher rate taxpayer now in terms of higher rate taxpayers what rate of income tax do they have to pay 40 percent very good and what about uh, class one national insurance what about class one national insurance so we are paying 40 percent income tax uh, yes very good it's just two percent okay so it's a uh, 40 percent income tax plus two percent uh, class one national insurance so you pay 42 percent yeah very good so what percentage will you be left with let's say Rashida is a higher rate taxpayer and she gets a thousand pounds bonus very good yeah she'll be left with 58 percent okay so if the examiner gives you a higher rate taxpayer all you need to do is to simply use 58 percent so here we're told Mira is a higher rate taxpayer and gets a bonus of 10,000 pounds how much after-tax bonus will Mira have so just use the 58 percent yeah excellent thank you Sabine thank you Imran Caitlin um, yeah thank you yes yeah perfect guys I think all of you have understood this very important area okay so um, these are marginal tax computations so as all of you have said because Mira is a higher rate taxpayer she's paying income tax at 40 percent and class one national insurance at two percent so Mira is paying 42 percent tax so the after-tax income will be 58 percent so he likes asking you about after-tax income in the exam. Now, with regard to a higher rate taxpayer, do any of you remember what the nil rate band is for savings income? So they don't get they don't get the full one thousand. What 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 amount of yeah? Very good, Caitlin. Yeah, Adu, uh, Adu, Ias, Lucas, yeah, Shrewd, Viptubi. Yeah, they only get five hundred. Okay. So here, the, um, the, um, the, the nil rate band for savings income for higher rate taxpayers is just 500 pounds. And we know that on savings income, they pay a rate of tax of, of 40%. Now, uh, with regard to dividends, higher rate, tax, uh, higher rate taxpayers still get the nil rate band of um, 2,000 pounds. But their taxable dividends are taxed at what rate? 
32.5%. Absolutely correct. Yeah, well done. Okay. So basic rate taxpayers pay income tax and dividends at 7.5%, but higher rate taxpayers pay income tax and dividends at 32.5%. So what we're told here is Mira gets a 2,000 interest and 3,000 dividends. So Mira gets 2,000 uh, interest and 3,000 dividends. So can all of you have a go at working out how much income tax Mira has to pay on that? So she's got 2,000 interest. So remember, uh, it's only 1500 of the interest that will be taxable and that will be taxed at 20 percent with regard to the dividends she gets the full 2000 nil rate band so you only tax 1000 dividends at 32.5 percent Yeah, well done, Caitlin. Uh, yeah, very good, shrewd. Yeah. So, um, yes, good. Yeah, well done, Sabine. Good. Excellent. I do. Very good. So, those of you who are able to do the 925, that's excellent, Kemi. Okay. So, I want to see you using your calculators because what the examiner is saying is people are not doing the exam questions fast enough. People are taking too long to do them. Okay. So, I'm showing you the speed. Uh, that the examiner expects you to go at in the exam. Okay? So just be relaxed, but make sure all of you can do these calculations. Good. So as far as Mira is concerned, she has to pay income tax on £1,500 of her dividends at, of, on £1,500 of her interest at 40%. That gives you £600. With regard to the dividends, uh, she'll only pay income tax on 1,000 of her dividends at 32.5% to give us 325. So all you do is add 600 and 325 together to give you 925. Is everyone happy with higher rate taxpayers? Yes. So that's uh, you know one of the most uh, popular areas um, in the exam. So that's one of the most popular areas in the exam. Now the last thing the examiner could do is instead of giving you someone who's an employee, he could give you someone who's self-employed. Now if you're self-employed, what do we call the natural, the type of national insurance contributions that you have to make? So we pay class 2 which is a small amount. Yeah, very good Luca, it's called class 4. And in terms of class four, um, do any of you know what the rate of tax is um, for basic rate taxpayers? Very good, yes. Uh, for basic rate taxpayers, it's 9%, okay? So it's 9% for basic rate taxpayers. So if, if someone is self-employed, so here we're told Olu is self-employed and he's a basic rate taxpayer. So that means that Olu has to pay income tax at 20% and he's also going to pay class four national insurance at 9%, okay? So the total rate of tax he's got to pay is 29%, absolutely correct. So what the examiner could tell you is he now gets an extra contract uh, earning uh, 10,000 pounds so because he's paying 29% in tax, um, how what percentage will he be left with? Very good, yes, 71%, excellent. So all you have to do is take the 10,000 and multiply by 71%. Yeah, excellent, well done. So that gives you 7,100, well done everyone. So I'm happy to see all of you have understood these marginal tax computations. Okay, So here for uh, someone who's self-employed, remember you pay income tax at 20% and then you pay class 4 national insurance at just 9%. So when the examiner gives you marginal tax computations, always look and see whether the individual is employed or self-employed. 
Now, um, another change that's come in is on the car benefit. Okay, and now with regard to cars, you have to make sure you check to see whether the car is electric, hybrid, or petrol or diesel. Okay, so the car could either be electric, hybrid, or petrol or diesel. In terms of uh, hybrid cars, here we're talking about CO2 emissions between 1 to 50 grams. The car benefit is based on the range of the car. Okay, so as you know, what we mean by the range of the car is once you charge the battery of the electric car, we look and see what how many miles the car can travel until you need to charge it again. So it's based on the actual range of the car. So um, let's say uh, the examiner tells you Rena has got a hybrid car with a list price of 15,200 and uh, CO2 emissions of 26 grams. The electric range is 100 miles. Okay. Now, because 100 miles falls between 70 to 129, the percentage you use is 4%. So to find Rena's car benefit, all we do is we take the list price and because the electric range, the, the car that, she, that she's got, the hybrid car, uh, can travel for uh, 100 miles, um, what we do then is we multiply the 15,200 by 4%. So can all of you have a go at working out the car benefit? Excellent. Thank you, uh, Imran, Sabine. So this is something the examiner will ask you about as well. Okay. So this is something new uh, and, and this is for hybrid cars. Yeah, excellent. So all you have to do is just take the 608. Now, if the examiner tells you um, that Rena is provided with private fuel as well, what you do is you take the fuel scale charge with your which you're given in the tax rates and you multiply that by four percent as well okay so if rena got private fuel you work out the fuel benefit in the same way exactly exactly levan excellent so for hybrid cars levan you completely ignore the co2 emissions got that I mean, you don't use. I mean, you don't use the CO two emissions to work out the the benefit. Okay, um, the CO two emissions are as long as it's between one to fifty. It's a hybrid car because it's still using you know some petrol or some diesel. Okay, and all you do is you base it on the range of the car. So that's new. Now, uh, can any of you tell me what type of car we have here? What kind of image? What type of car is this? Yeah, this is a Tesla. Yeah, very good. Luca, Cuthbert, uh, Cameron, uh, Rashida. Yeah, this is a Tesla. And a Tesla is 100% electric. Okay. So if you have a Tesla, uh, let's say Asa has got a Tesla, what that means is Asa is driving a car that's 100% electric. So do, do, are these cars very good for the environment? What do you think? Yes. The, yeah, thank you, Abigail. Uh, thank you, Asa. Because they're very good for the environment. Ah, Cuthbert has got a Tesla. Excellent. Very nice, Cuthbert. Okay. So, Cuthbert, I hope you can give me a lift uh, in your electric car, guys. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Excellent. Well done. Okay. Um, now, for someone like Cuthbert, what we're trying to say is because it's his, his car is environmentally friendly, um, the, the car benefit is just... <laughs> is just one percent okay so let's say uh, Cuthbert has got an electric car his his employer has given him an, an electric car the electric car costs fifty thousand pounds Cuthbert will only be taxed on one percent of the fifty thousand and that gives us five hundred pounds so is it is it beneficial to have an electric car um, as a company car what do you think 
Yes, absolutely, absolutely, yes. So you can see the benefit is so low. And the reason the government have done this is to encourage companies to provide their employees with electric cars. Okay. Now, for petrol or diesel cars, the base level is still 55 grams. But now, you start with a percentage of 15%. Okay. So, what we're told here is Hamish has got a diesel car with CO2 emissions of 112. Now, with regard to 112, we can't divide that by 5. So, what do we have to do with the 112? We, no, no, before we divide by 5, we round down. Yeah, very good. So you start by rounding down to 110. Okay? Once you've rounded down to 110, we then need to work out the amount in excess of 55 grams. So what you're going to say here is 100 take away 55. So 110 take away 55. And that gives you 55 grams. Yeah, very good, Rashida. We then divide the 55 by 5. And that gives us an extra 11%. Now, th the base percentage you're given in the exam is 15%. So all we're going to do now is we start with a 15. Yeah, excellent. Thank you. And now we add this extra 11%. Now, Hamish has got a diesel car. For diesel cars, usually, do any of you remember what extra percentage we need to add for diesel cars? Yeah, thank you, Luca. Thank you, Luca. Thank you, Adu. Thank you, Kemi. Usually, it's 4%. But if the examiner tells you that he meets, the car meets the RDE2 standard, what that means is the car has a filter on it, okay? and you don't need to add this extra 4% for diesel. Yeah, there is no addition. So all you're going to do here is we're not going to add the 4%, and yeah, thank you, Rashida, and we just use um, 26%. So can all of you, so the examiner has told you the list price of Hamish's car is 22,000. Can all of you have a go at working out his car benefit? Yeah, well done, Kemi, Luca, very good. Yeah, you guys are doing some very good calculations. Yeah, thank you, Harsh. Yeah, thank you, Caitlin. Excellent. So, you know, the car benefit is very popular in the exam. Okay, and this is how you work out. Thank you, Ears. Uh, this is how you find the car benefit. So for Hamish, as we said, we round down uh, to 110. You then work out the amount in excess of 55, and you divide by 5. And that gives us a relevant percentage of 26%. But we ignore the 4% for diesel because it meets the RDE2 standard. So the car benefit is 5,720. So um, is everyone happy with the car benefit? Yes, okay. So if he gives you a, a hybrid car, if he gives you a hybrid car, you simply use the range of the car. Uh, if he gives you an uh, electric car, you just use 1%. And if he gives you the usual petrol or diesel cars, this is the way you work out the car benefit. Now, the other thing that has changed is capital allowances. Levan, uh, what do you mean by taxing this in the performa? Uh, all we do then, um, Levan, let's say uh, Hamish... Um, uh, Hamish is an employee, so when you're working out his employment income for income tax purposes, you take the salary, yeah, yeah Levan, you take his salary, you take his bonus, and then you add this car benefit of 5720. Okay, so uh, Levan, uh, the car benefit is only subject to income tax. Yeah, we don't pay national insurance, so employees don't have to pay. Uh, national insurance on uh, car benefits. We only pay national insurance on what's called cash convertible benefits, which are things like option schemes. Good. 
Um, the next thing we're going to look at is cap allowances or tax depreciation. Now we use the functional test to identify plant and machinery. Okay, And as long as the plant and machinery is used in the business and dynamic, dynamic means movable, we can claim cap allowances on it. So in terms of, um, in terms of capital expenditure, um, we are allowed to claim cap allowances on things like cars, um, vans and lorries. We can also claim cap allowances on machinery, uh, computers, and furniture. So these are the kind of assets on which you're allowed to get capital allowances. Okay. Um, if the asset is part of the setting in which the business is carried out, contribute to the ambience. So in other words, the ambience is the feel of the of the business, then it's not plant and machinery and you can't claim cap allowances. So we do not get cap allowances for plant and machinery on buildings. Do any of you know how much structural buildings allowance we can claim on buildings? Yeah, very good, Cameron. Yeah, excellent. Yeah, it's 3%. Yeah, 3% straight line. But uh, that's dealt with separately. Okay, so it doesn't come into our cap allowance computation. It's just called structural buildings allowance. Thank you for that. So what we now do is we put all assets, including hybrid cars, uh, vans and lorries, into the main pool and we claim a writing down allowance of 18% reducing balance each year. Do all of you remember the 18% WDA for the main pool? If you remember that, type in Y for yes. Excellent, good, yeah. So the examiner will ask you about capital allowances. Now, the integral features of a building, so this is the machinery that's included in the building, things like electrical systems, water heating, security systems, lifts and escalators, and uh, petrol and diesel cars, so these are the usual cars, they go into the special rate pool. And the special rate pool gets a WDA of 6% reducing balance each year. So the main pool gets a WDA of 18%, the special rate pool only gets 6%. In terms of uh, cars like Cuthbert's uh, Tesla, uh, if you buy a new uh, low emission car, so this is an electric car, so if you buy a new Tesla, you get a 100% first year allowance. So, if you buy an uh, electric car, what percentage allowance do you get? So these are all new cars. 100%, very good. If you buy, thank you Cameron, uh, thank you Kemi, if you buy a hybrid car, what percentage WDA do you get? Hybrid car, 18%, very good, yes. Good. If you buy a petrol car, what percentage WDA do you get? 6%, excellent. So these are the new rules, okay? These are now the new rules for cars, good. In addition to that, um, we get an annual investment allowance of one million pounds per year on any asset. Now, are we allowed to claim an annual investment allowance on second-hand assets? Cameron, Cuthbert, yes. Okay, it is eligible on second-hand. Are you happy with that? So the annual investment allowance is available on second hand. No, 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 don't worry. I'm, you know, we have to cover it in detail now. Okay, so the interesting thing is the AIA, the first year allowance, yeah, the first year allowance is only available on new electric cars, but the annual investment allowance is available on second hand items except for cars. The only thing you can't claim the AIA on is, is on cars, okay? And what you do is you share it between related companies in the group in any way. In order to have related companies, what percentage do we look for? 51% no, Luca, okay? So 51%, yeah, thank you. Thank you, Kemi, thank you, Shrewd, thanks, uh, Cuthbert, yeah. Now, in terms of claiming the AIA, with the main pool, the main pool gets 18%, 
the special rate pool gets 6%. Should we claim the AIA on the main pool first or the special rate pool first? Very good. Yeah, you claim it on the special rate pool. Excellent. So from a tax planning point of view, we always allocate the AIA to the special rate pool before the main pool. Now, <laughs> Sherry, Sherry, yes, you will receive the recording. Sherry, did you get the email I sent you before the lecture with the link and uh, the induction information? Sherry, did you get that? There's no answer from Sherry, okay? Oh, Sherry, you should have got that. Did all of you receive the induction email I sent you? Yeah, yeah, good, good, yeah. So Sherry, <laughs> Sherry, you must check your emails, yeah. Uh, you should have received it, guys, okay? So after the lecture, I will send you the recording, okay? Good, uh, can any of you tell me who this, who this guy is? Who, who this guy is, okay? Wearing a super, a superhero costume. Who is this guy? Rishi. Yeah, this is Rishi. No, it's not me. <laughs> it's not me. No, no, Vicky is not me. It's it's Rishi Sunak, the um, the Chancellor. So what Rishi decided to do was to introduce a brand new super allowance. Okay. And the super allowance is available for capital additions from the 1st of April 21 up to the 31st of March 2023. Okay, So it's actually called the super deduction. Now, it's only available for companies. So the super deduction is only available for companies. And you can only claim it on assets that go into the main pool. Exactly, exactly. Very good. Yes, yeah. Very good, Simran. Yeah. No, no, Simran, electric cars get 100%. Got that? So it's only hybrid cars that get 18%. Petrol or diesel get 6%. And electric cars get 100%. Yeah, so it's a, it's a change. Yeah, it, it, it's a big change um, that's happened. Good. Uh, so Rishi has introduced this uh, super deduction of, um, and it's available for companies only, and it's only available for uh, additions that go into the main pool. And now the super deduction is 130%. Okay. So let's say a company buys some machinery costing 100000 What allowance can the company claim on the machinery? A hundred and thirty thousand. Very good. Yes, absolutely correct. Yeah. So instead of claiming a hundred thousand, we can actually claim a hundred and thirty thousand. Now it's only available on new assets, not second hand. Okay. So the machinery must be new. Um, Luca, yeah, Luca. It's just a cap allowance. I'll show you how it works. Okay, it's it's a, it's 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 like it's done in our cap allowance computation. Yeah, it's done in our cap allowance computation. Yeah. So instead of us claiming like a hundred percent Luca, we simply claim a hundred and thirty percent. Okay. Yeah. Now it's it's only available on new assets, not second hand. So you can't claim it on second hand items, and it's not available on cars. So anything that goes into the main pool apart from cars can now get this 130% super deduction. Now, with regard to the special rate pool, Rishi said the special rate pool is now uh, can now get 50% first year allowance. Okay, so if you buy a hundred thousand and that goes into the special rate pool, what allowance can you claim? Hundred thousand of special rate, yeah, of uh, fifty thousand, yeah, fifty thousand first year allowance, yeah. Thank you, yeah. So what you can see then is it's better for us to claim the AIA of one million. Is everyone happy with that instead of the fifty percent first year allowance? Yes. So 
when you have additions that go into the special rate pool, what we do first is we claim the AIA of 1 million. After claiming the AIA, we can then claim the 50% first year allowance. Okay, so if the examiner tells you we bought one, he'll tell you we bought 1.3 million. The company bought 1.3 million of assets going into the special rate pool. What you do is you claim the AIA, the AI of 1 million, and on the 300,000, what allowance are we going to get on the 300,000? 150,000, thank you, Luca. You can claim the 50% the first year allowance on the, on the 300,000. But you're not allowed, you're not allowed, uh... oh, that's strange, Vicky. That's strange, okay? So, um, um, you cannot claim the 6% as well, okay? So, I just want to know, did, did, uh, did people get an email that said induction today? Yes, yeah. So, some of you got it, some of you didn't. Oh, that's strange, yeah. That's weird, that's weird, okay? So, um, look, I, I tell you what, the email was definitely sent. Ah, you got it at 12.10, yeah. So maybe uh, I, I sent it at about 12.10. Yeah, yeah, good, yeah. So just um, some of you, it may have gone into your junk email, okay? So just check that. Um, it might have gone into your junk email, okay? Yeah, 12.08, yeah. Excellent, good. So uh, let's now look at a question on cap allowances, okay? So what we're told here is Peacock has got an accounting period Accounting, uh, accounting date of 31st of March, but has changed this to 30th of September in 2021 with a six month accounting period. So Peacock has prepared a six month uh, period. Okay. And, um, okay, okay, not to worry. So I'll, I'll, I'll send one today. But if you don't get it today, I'll ask um, the administrator to send one tomorrow, okay? So just to make sure that, you know, hopefully, uh, but like I said, if you don't get one today, just give it a bit of time for the administrator to send you one, because obviously today is a Sunday, okay? So on the 1st of April 21, it has a main pool uh, tax written down value of nothing and a special rate pool balance of 90,000. And don't forget guys, um, the way to communicate with me is to communicate through LinkedIn, okay? So if you, um, if you don't, don't get the recording from me uh, today, you can always just send me a message on LinkedIn and I'll send it to you. Has everyone connected with me on LinkedIn? Yes, okay, good, yeah, fantastic, good. Okay. Um, now, because the counting period is only six months, can any of you tell me how much AIA we can claim for a six-month period? Yeah, absolutely, yeah. So it's going to be uh, uh, 1 million times 50%, which is 500,000, okay? So uh, here we can only claim an AIA of 500,000. With regard to the company for the six month period, the company spent 800,000 on movable plant and machinery. So that plant and machinery didn't, didn't include cars, that's going to go into the main pool. So what percentage can we claim on the 800,000? Excellent, thank you Cameron. So this is the new bit, okay? So it's 800,000 multiplied by 130%. Can all of you work that out? I hope all of you have got your calculators with you, okay? Excellent, Cuthbert, yeah. Okay, thank you, Luca. Thank you, Ayes. Yeah, very good, yes. Um, thank you, Kemi. Yeah, so it's one zero four zero thousand. Thank you. Now the one million is going to go into the special rate pool. With the one million, what are we going to claim on the one million first? 
the AIA. Thank you. Yeah. So what you go, you're going to do is you're going to claim the AIA of 500,000 first because we allocate the AIA to the special rate pool. And what about the remaining 500,000? What can we claim based on the remaining 500,000? Excellent, IS. Yeah, the 50% first year allowance. Thank you, Rashida. Excellent. I'm happy to see all of you have understood this. So this is the new bit that's come into our exam. Okay. By the way, are we allowed to claim the 6% uh, after the first year allowance? Are we allowed to claim the 6%? No, Cameron. No. Okay. <laughs> Good. Yeah. So you only you only claim the AIA, and then the fifty percent. No. Yeah, Simran, you can never claim any of these allowances on cars. Oh, is that okay, Simran? So the AIA, and the first year allowance is not available on cars. Um. In the past, uh, Sabine, in the past, uh, the we could only, yeah, in the past, what we used to do is we used to, this super deduction is brand new, okay? So this super deduction is brand new. So when you're updating your notes, Sabine, can you see this is a new slide to add in? Can you see that, Sabine? So this is brand new, okay? So you'll add this into your notes. So it wasn't there at all, yeah. Yeah, um, yes. Um, so the AIA is now yeah one million. Just use one million, and then uh, you're adding this brand new slide into your notes. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So uh, what I'll do? Uh, no. No. You're not going to get the notes or the slides. <laughs> you're not going to get the notes or the slides. But you'll get the recording. Okay. You'll get the recording, and you can just pause the recording. Uh, Yes, a cut, but I don't think there are that many questions, which is why I'm working through a question here with you. Okay? So, uh, this is something so new, Cuthbert. Yeah? Um, I don't think they've actually written any questions that are in the kit, you see? So, that's why it's very important to understand this question. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, because it's all brand new stuff, yeah. So, um, so you know, some of you are asking me how we claim it. All you do now is you just say, you take the 800 and you say 130%, which is 1040, and all you do is you say it's a super deduction. Is everyone happy with that? Yeah, okay. With regard to the special rate pool, what you do is you claim the AIA first of 50%, and then after claiming the AIA, you then claim um, the first year allowance, okay? So that um, with regard to the first year allowance of 500,000, what we then do is um, we then claim 50% of the 500,000 as the first year allowance. Are we allowed to claim the 6% as well? on these uh, additions that we bought? No, no. So when you claim the 6%, the 6% is only claimed on the stuff that you bought in the previous year. Okay? So the 6% is claimed based on the tax written down value brought forward. Absolutely. Now, I want to warn you, it, it, the examiner can make it quite complicated because he can give you second-hand items as well. Okay? So with second-hand items, are second-hand items eligible for the AIA? Yes, yes, okay. So you can claim the AIA on second-hand items, but can you claim the super deduction? No, no. And uh, you've seen that I've got a good question here from uh, Shrewd. The super deduction is not time apportioned. Okay, so is everyone happy with that? Yeah, so make sure you're going to you look at this question carefully because this will help you understand the new rules on capital allowances. Now we've also got new rules for personal service companies. So I'm expecting areas like personal service companies and uh, buyback of shares to come up for you in June. Okay, so make sure you're looking at personal service companies and buyback of shares. 
So with personal service companies, they've now extended the rules to the private sector. Okay, so they've extended the rules to the private sector. And if you remember earlier, when we um, the personal service company has got to pay PYE on something called the deemed salary, and we compute the deemed salary by using a hundred over one one three point eight. Okay. So once again, if some of you have not uh, looked at personal service companies, you do have to look at that carefully. But now we have some new rules, and for medium and large companies, the examiner will tell you the size of the company. The end client is now responsible for paying the POYE. Okay? So the end client has got to pay the POYE, not the personal service company. This is only if the end client is a medium or a large company, a large organization. If the examiner tells you it's a small organization, the personal service company is still responsible for paying the POI. Now the end client will issue what's called a status determination statement to the worker. And then what the end client does is the end client then pays income tax and national insurance on what's called the deemed direct payment. So do you have to learn all these terms? Status determination statement and deemed direct payment, DPP. Do you have to learn this? Yes, you do, okay? So this is the new stuff that's coming. And this is computed as payment for services, net of VAT, less direct material costs and deductible employee expenses incurred by the personal service company. So all we're trying to say now is the end client, if the end client is a medium or a large organization, it's now responsible for paying the POA. Exactly, Luca, that's the exact point. So guys, if you look at Luca's question, they've moved the compliance burden to the end client. Okay. So any uh, large or medium organization now has to do the personal service company stuff. They have to you know, compute the tax and deduct it before they make the payment. So let's take a look at a uh, question on this. Um, so what we are told here is Tammy is a consultant and provides services through his personal service company. No, no, I'll show you. The computation is very easy, Sheriff. Yeah? The computation is very, very easy. It's the, this is how he's going to examine it, okay? Tam, uh, so Tammy is, got as, is a consultant. He provides his uh, services through his personal service company. Uh, Tam has issued a, a contract of 100000 to Bly Corp PLC, a large company. And uh, Tam has incurred office expenditure 5,000 and um, business travel expenses of 5,000. And then the examiner will ask you what the large company has to do under the new rules. Now, as far as the large company is concerned, is the large company, can we deduct the office expenditure and the business travel expenses when we compute the POYE? No, no, shrewd. There's no 5% here, okay? You're talking about the end client, okay? Uh, yes, Druvi, we do, okay? So I have to show you this. Yeah, you guys are not sure about this. I'll show you this. So Blycorp uh, will issue a status determination statement. It's called an SDS for TAM Limited. And then Blycorp will compute what's called the deemed direct payment. It's called the DDP, okay? And the way you compute the DDP is you say 100,000, take away all the office expenses and the employment expenses based on 90,000, okay? So now Blycorp will then have to find the income tax, the employee national insurance, and the employer national insurance on the 90,000, okay? So this is done by the end client, the large company. And what they do is they deduct this tax from the payment to TAM Limited. 
okay? So when TAM Limited gets the payment, they're receiving the payment net of POI. Did all of you understand that? Yes, okay? So all we're saying is the end client is doing the POIE on this deemed direct payment. Now, when TAM Limited receives the money uh, net of PAYE, does TAM Limited, the personal service company, have to pay PAYE again when it computes its deemed salary? No, no, no. Yeah. So what? Yeah. So the next thing that happens is TAM can deduct the ninety thousand from its income before computing the deemed salary to avoid double taxation. Is everyone happy with that? So what the examiner will do is he'll still expect you to know what the personal service company does, but now all of you have to understand what the end client does as well. Is everyone happy with that? So it's not difficult at all, yeah? So it's just that the responsibility has now been passed on to the end client because IR35 has now been extended to the private sector. So those of you who are accountants in companies, you need to be very careful when you make payments to freelance individuals, okay? So any freelancers who invoice you, um, who are trading through companies, you now have to deduct PAYE on this payment to a company. So even though it's a payment to a company, you will deduct PAYE, okay? So it's a, it's a big change in the system. Okay, uh, the next change that's come in is VAT. And are you, all of you finding what I'm covering with you useful? Is everyone finding what I'm covering with you useful? Yeah, yeah, good. So you can see what I mean. So th these points are going to come up in the exam, but they're not, they're not really difficult. They're not difficult, but you know, as long as you understand the key points, it's, it's, you can cover them very quickly. Uh, the UK, for the purpose of the exam, the UK has now left the EU. So dealing with an EU country now is just like dealing with countries outside the EU. So exports to EU countries are all zero rated. Okay, And um, with regard to exports, they are taxable supplies, so you're still allowed to claim back input VAT on your UK purchases. So now, any exports outside the UK are zero rated. In terms of imports from an EU country, you have to pay input VAT at the point of entry into the UK. Okay? So if the, uh, when the goods arrive at a seaport like Southampton or an airport like Heathrow, uh, you have to pay VAT. Uh, Safir is asking, does IR35 change applicable to SMEs when engaging in personal service companies? So, Samir, we don't use the term SME anymore, okay? We have small organizations, medium organizations, and large organizations. So medium and large have to do this status determination statements, and they have to compute PAYE. Are you happy with that? So HMRC have moved away from the old system of SMEs and large companies, okay? So we still use SMEs and large companies for, for transfer pricing and research and development, but um, with regard to uh, IR35 now, we have small, medium, and large organizations. Good. Good. Um, EU imports are subject to input VAT at the point of entry into the UK. And any input VAT you pay on EU imports, you can claim it back, okay? So let's say uh, um, a, U a company, a VAT registered business buys this calculator from Spain, uh, they have to pay VAT once the goods arrive in the UK. But you can postpone payment of VAT by keeping the goods in what's called a bonded warehouse or a free zone, okay? And basically these free zones are essentially in airports or in um, seaports. So once you, as long as you keep the goods there, you haven't taken it out, you don't have to pay the VAT. You only have to pay the VAT when you remove the goods from there. 
and the UK company can join the deferment scheme to postpone the payment of VAT until the 15th of the following month. So um, in terms of cash flow, you can recommend your client keeps the goods in a bonded warehouse or joins the deferment scheme. Okay, uh, what we are now going to do is we're now going to um, have all of you seen a poll uh, come up on your screen. Has a poll come up on your screen? So we're going to have a nice uh, little easy quiz, okay? Okay, so the first question, the first quiz question is what allowance can you now claim on your main pool items? Okay, so either 18% uh, AIA of 1 million or choice 3 super deduction of 130%. Can all of you choose your answer? So 18% um, WD of 1 million or super deduction of 130%. Once you've done that, can you type in the, the letter D for done? Excellent. So which, which answer did you go for? Um, 18, AIA or super? Simran. Simran. No. <laughs> Main pool items is now... Yeah, very good. Oh, gosh. Some of you are going for 18. Oh, you have to press... You have to press equals, yeah. So some of you, yeah. For some, what's happened here, yeah. Good. So the answer is super deduction, everyone, okay? It's super deduction, yeah, super deduction. Okay, good. Um, what allowance can be claimed on special rate pool items? What allowance can be claimed on special rate pool items? Is it the 6% WDA? the AIA of 1 million or first year allowance of 50%? Okay, so I want you to say six, okay. Can I, I tell you what, the easiest thing to do is just type your answers in the chat box, okay? Sorry, yeah, uh, oh I see, sorry, uh, sorry, yeah. So if you just do, uh, just type your answers into the chat box, sorry about that, just ignore what's come up on your screen. So just say either 6%, AIA or FYA. So this is a trick question, guys, because even though the first year allowance of 50% is available, it's better to claim the AIA. Is everyone happy with that? Yeah. So it's a tricky question. So please get that right in the exam. Yeah. Even though Rishi has introduced the, the first year allowance, it's better to claim the AIA on the special rate pool, yes, okay? So just be careful about that because I think that's going to be examined, okay? Good, um, now when you compute the car benefit for electric cars, so these are fully electric, uh, which one do we go for? 1% uh, CO2 emissions or range? 1%, yeah, good, good. So for electric cars, remember, it's now just 1%, okay? So you just take the list price and you multiply by 1%. Um, who pays the PAYE if the PSC deals with a medium end client? Is it the personal service company or the medium end client? Yeah, so this is what I'm trying to show you. There's now this new terminology, okay? So even if the examiner says medium, you treat it, it's medium or large, okay? So medium or large, excellent, well done. So you can see, guys, you, you're, you're getting it right, well done, okay? So you've understood these key points. Um, if a UK uh, business exports goods to an EU customer, which one is true? You charge VAT if you're not VAT registered, you charge VAT if the customer is VAT registered, or you do not charge any VAT. What do you think? Very good, yes. 
it doesn't matter okay so now you're not concerned when you're dealing with EU um, EU transactions you you don't have to worry whether or not the customer is VAT registered uh, there's no VAT to pay and finally uh, did you enjoy the webinar okay did you enjoy the webinar everyone yes good 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 excellent excellent good okay good so uh, what are your next steps uh, your next steps remember uh, if you need a revision course or you need some help you can always join our Kaplan courses okay so as you know I'm a Kaplan tutor uh, you can get my amazing uh, advanced tax or ca tax condensed notes no 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 so Simra no changes to capital gains tax or IHT yeah CGT and IHT is exactly the same yeah uh, using accelerated learning techniques yeah um, make sure you uh, visit my website yeah it's a pleasure helping you uh, and Connie um, and uh, don't forget to connect with me on LinkedIn. Yes, uh, yes, I'm doing lectures, but most of my courses are face to face in London. Okay, so I'm not doing a lot of online courses now. Uh, I just want to tell you about various free resources I've got uh, to help you. Uh, you can use my um, ah yeah, so you can come to London. Yeah, just uh, drop me a message on LinkedIn. Um, so watch my tax videos on Kaplan YouTube channel okay they're all free and even I've got a free podcast that you can use um, yes yeah so they're, they're different choices they're weekend they're full day courses yes powers I do teach uh, I do teach uh, weekend courses at Kaplan now the important thing for all of you is to believe in yourself okay so uh, you have to believe in yourself don't be afraid okay believe you can pass your tax exams but after you believe that you have to back that with hard work and proper guidance and pass your exam so you have to believe you can do it okay so uh, some people you'll find that um, what they do is they tend to start thinking negative okay because they fail their exams uh, and so on uh, Kemi yes I do have a revised version okay so there are new condensed notes available but just see obviously if you if you can update your condensed notes based on today then you don't really need a copy okay uh, but you know if you want a copy obviously it's 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 all been updated so the important thing like I said is try and build yourself up with positive words so tell yourself that you can do it okay don't don't listen to negative people or negative uh, negative self-talk you should not do that okay um, um, you can see here we have various students of ours who've uh, just to show you that they've actually passed the exams this is a young lady called Maham here okay um, good so you can see Maham uh, passed the exams with 61% um, so that's very good Cuthbert very good you can see Maham is is qualified uh, we have this young gentleman here he's he didn't come for any of my courses but you know he used my condensed notes and podcast uh, you know he had lost faith okay he had lost faith uh, yes you must get a new revision kit okay so it's very important to get a new revision kit yeah uh, no don't use the ACC website you need you need to get a Kaplan exam kit okay so uh, after failing yeah he got he got yeah and Druvi there's a new revised list of 33 questions yeah so you just have to send me an email yeah so obviously those of you but the the revised list will only go to the people who've bought advanced tax condensed okay so um, as long as you've bought it as long as you bought in the past obviously you're entitled to one yeah good yeah and then um, uh, you can see this guy you know he, he used the condensed notes on the you know and he he listened to the podcast on the train and this gentleman here he he passed his exams okay uh, you can see we've got lots of people here we've got this lady here um, yeah Lily she also passed the exams okay so you know she found she and you can see what she's saying advanced tax has been the hardest exam and the one that she's most worried about and she actually ended up getting 76 percent okay so what I'm trying to show you here is that you know all of you can pass the exam all you need to do is work hard and uh, believe in yourself okay uh, you just need to work hard and believe in yourself and all of you can pass uh, you can see that this guy is he was a 
he's a dad okay so he's busy with his children but you know he, he worked hard and now they've all passed and many of them are fully qualified and uh, you know they'll tell you that your 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 lives will change for the better so it's been a pleasure meeting all of you today um, I like to wish you good luck in the exams okay yeah yes you have to make sure you pass the exam uh, like I said you can drop me an email I'll send you a, a details on um, uh, of that um, and um, uh, I'd like to wish all of you the very best of luck. Uh, take care, try and do as much work as you can and believe in yourselves, okay? Um, take care, everyone. Um, yes, yeah, uh, it's been great seeing all of you today and um, wishing you all the best. Okay. My pleasure, my pleasure, good. Thank you, thanks. <laughs>